Hi there, it's Lerald, and today I'm putting out a complete guide on how to play Vengeance Demon Hunter in patch 8.2, including going over all the new stuff that's been added in the patch. I'll start out this video by quickly covering the bunch of buffs that happen to Demon Hunter tanks, then move on to the pros and cons of the class, how to play spec and gear, and finally finish up with 8.2's essence system. If you already have a good handle on the class and just want a refresher, there will be a table of contents in the video description so that you can quickly skip to the section you're looking for. Given that the patch has been out for a couple of weeks now, I won't go into too much detail on the Demon Hunter changes, but here they are. Demon Hunter's base armor and damage reduction were buffed and Demon Spikes was nerfed. This makes it so the class is roughly as tanky as it used to be when Demon Spikes is active, maybe even a little more, but a lot more tanky when it's down. That's a good move, it fixes the biggest complaint that the class had, and I would argue that if anything, maybe it wasn't ambitious enough, but it at least shows that Blizzard correctly diagnosed the problem with the class and have taken steps to try to fix it. Soul Cleave damage was slightly buffed. It's something, but it's a filler spell, so who really cares? And finally, Metamorphosis was significantly buffed. It's a real cooldown now. And on that note, let's move into what's good about Vengeance Demon Hunters. Despite some glaring flaws, they have several really strong redeeming qualities. First of all, they deal very solid damage. Unlike Warrior and Paladin, they don't have major offensive cooldowns, but they deal very respectable damage at all times, especially in AoE. This means that Demon Hunters have excellent threat output. And while that's not normally something you would expect me to talk about or even care about, it's kind of become a big issue in Mythic Plus lately due to the relative power of offensive Azerite essences available to DPS specs versus those available to tanks. For most tanks, even skilled offensively geared tanks, DPS opening up on trash packs with their Azerite death laser and bursting out to 200k DPS are immediately going to rip threat and it'll take several seconds of slamming the mobs as hard as you possibly can to recover. For Demon Hunters, and pretty much Demon Hunters alone, this has been a lot less of an issue, as their damage output is almost all AoE, and it's extremely easy to throw out an enormous opening burst of AoE damage and lock that threat down. Now tanks did just receive a buff to threat from the Essence system while I was working on this video, but it frankly isn't that huge of a buff, and DH still has the advantage over other tanks of always dealing good AoE damage in Mythic Plus without having to wait for offensive cooldowns. Demon Hunters also have really nice mob CC utility. While they don't have a direct AoE stun, that's not necessarily a bad thing due to how diminishing returns work. Instead, they have an AoE Silence, an AoE Fear, and an AoE Grip Slash Slow, as well as a single target incapacitate and an offensive dispel. That offensive dispel is unique among tanks and very, very nice to have. Additionally, DH is a pretty mobile class. While some players, and probably some people in the comments section right now, will argue that they're the most mobile tank class, I reject that, primarily because they only have one mobility skill and they use it as part of their offensive rotation. If you're using an offensive skill to move around rather than dealing damage with it, that's kinda not great. Still, they're a close third on mobility behind Monk and Warrior, and that's good. All of this comes together to make DH's really solid, fun tanks in Mythic Plus. And with that, let's jump to the cons. The biggest problem DH's have is that while their active mitigation is decent, they're really vulnerable when it's not active. While that can be covered over in Mythic Plus with good Azerite traits, skilled play, and even some coordinated stuns, in raids, you might just get meleeed to death in a couple of seconds with no recourse. In fact, during the first week of Mythic Eternal Palace, several Vengeance Demon Hunters reported being taken from 100% to dead in a single melee swing by Orgazoa. That's a bit of a weird case since he's a very hard-hitting boss, but still, yikes. Second, DH has a weird resource system. While pain is ostensibly your primary resource, it really isn't. Your primary resource is soul fragments, and you'll want to track them with weak auras. Pain is a filler resource, and kind of somewhat irrelevant. Lastly, Demon Hunter has a pretty limited set of defensive cooldowns. 
While the two cooldowns they have are both pretty strong thanks to the recent buff to Metamorphosis, it's a very weird defensive kit. They don't really have a mid-level defensive cooldown like Barkskin or Demoralizing Shout. It's just strange. Overall, I'd say that DH is rising in popularity and strength for Mythic Plus. It's not Warrior or even Monk, which has become shockingly popular with this season, but DH is definitely a lot better than it has been all expansion. For rating, again, it's in a better spot than it's been all expansion. It's not the safest or most popular raid tank, but it's competitive now. It's fun, and it deals a lot of damage, and that's an improvement. So now, let's quickly go over talents. Here's a one-size-fits-virtually-everything talent setup. Vengeance Demon Hunter is a bit like Protection Warrior in that nearly all of the talent tiers are one-slot options. You can go with the talent setup I have right here and tank 99% of the content in the game and you wouldn't need to make a single change. The only tier where I feel there's a very solid competitor is tier 5 with Sigil of Chains. Still, just for the sake of completion, here goes a full breakdown. Abyssal Strike adds two Infernal Strike casts per minute, which adds a pretty significant chunk of damage on its own, but also synergizes nicely with Flame Crash further down the tree, and Cycle of Binding on your Azerite armor to really add a lot of valuable AoE damage. Agonizing Flames and Razor Spikes are not bad talents on their own, but they just aren't competitive. Fallout makes Immolation Aura generate Spirit Fragments, which is massively more valuable than a small trickle of healing from Feast of Souls, or a weird splitting defensive cooldown slash dot from Burning Alive. Flame Crash adds AoE damage along with the talent Nazarite Synergy I just mentioned earlier, whereas Charred Flesh and Fellblade are not even close to being competitive. Fracture is the secret sauce that makes the entire class's rotation work. Feed the Demon is a usable, ultra-defensive talent option, but it's a serious offensive trade-off and really never worth using. Honestly, if you're so desperate to become a tiny bit more tanky that you need to sacrifice enormous chunks of offensive power, you probably should just switch to Monk or DK instead. Both of those classes are just significantly safer than a Demon Hunter trying to run Feed the Demon, and they'll probably wind up dealing more damage than a neutered DH would anyways. So, yeah, Fracture it is. In Tier 5, you have two really good options and one okay option. Concentrated Sigils is a slight DPS increase and makes all of your Sigils a bit easier to use, although this can be replicated with macros. When riding macros for ground-targeted AoE skills, you can simply type slash cast at player and the name of the skill, and it'll automatically cast the skill at your feet, without forcing you to click on the ground. You can also use at cursor to cast at your cursor's location. This is really nice for sigils, and it's extremely valuable for Infernal Strike. Sigil of Chains is a bit of a cheapo Gorfiend's Grasp, but it can be extremely valuable for bringing mobs together, or just for kiting in Mythic Plus. It's a really strong spell that just takes a little getting used to using. Quicken Sigils is a unique bonus, which sounds pretty good on paper but it also requires you to spend more GCDs on Sigil of Flame to deal the same damage as Concentrated Sigils. No thanks. In the next tier, Spirit Bomb is the core of the class. I couldn't even imagine wanting to play Demon Hunter without it. Neither of the other two options are even worth looking at. And finally, Last Resort is a simple, valuable cheat death effect that just provides a good safety net. Void Reaver is not a bad option in Mythic Plus if you're confident in your ability to survive without needing to rely on Last Resort, or if you're planning to do any death skips and having a cheat death would just be annoying. In raids, the safety net of Last Resort is preferable. Soul Barrier is weak, and it's on the GCD, so it's annoying and just not really worth using anywhere. Alright, now let's get down to the nuts and bolts of how to play the class. DH has a simple but fun offensive priority, primarily because it doesn't really change whether you're fighting in single target or AoE, but it is pretty fast paced. The primary rules of playing a Demon Hunter are that you never want to go over the cap on soul fragments, which is 5. If you're at 4 or 5 souls, go ahead and consume them with Spirit Bomb, then proceed to generate more with Fracture and Immolation Aura. Always try to keep Immolation Aura on cooldown, 
and keep at least one charge of fracture on cooldown, if not both charges. Another thing to keep in mind is that moving close to soul fragments consumes them. As a result, moving around carelessly can be a very significant DPS and healing loss, so always try to be deliberate with your movements and avoid eating soul fragments with your feet rather than spirit bomb. Infernal Strike is off the GCD, so try to use it periodically to maintain Sigil of Flame on your targets and keep at least one charge on cooldown at all times. It adds a pretty decent chunk of AoE damage, so don't be afraid to jump around quite a bit. Using Soul Cleave is simple. Never, ever, ever, ever use it to eat up your soul fragments, but do use it to dump pain immediately after you've cast Spirit Bomb. You will generate more pain than you can eat with Spirit Bomb, that's just how Vengeance Demon Hunter works. And as a result, Soul Cleave is a weak but still very useful filler spell that will provide a small, steady trickle of healing. More than you'll be able to get from your other filler spells, Throw Glaive and Sigil of Flame. In terms of defenses, Demon Spikes is a very simple active mitigation skill. It provides a huge chunk of armor, so you want to try to use it as much as possible whenever you need physical damage reduction. Try to keep it up pretty much as much as possible while you're tanking, that's really it. Demon Hunter has two defensive cooldowns. Fiery Brand is a single target shield wall that's weirdly on the GCD, but it's extremely potent, deals a decent chunk of damage, and has a really short cooldown for how strong it is. Learning to use it will take some practice, but seriously, it's a very good defensive cooldown when used correctly, and it should be your first line of defense. Metamorphosis is your other defensive cooldown, and it's a lot easier to use and generally more useful. It provides an absolutely enormous increase to your health pool and a pretty sizable chunk of armor. Unless you're getting absolutely obliterated, trying to maintain demon spikes while Metamorphosis is active will probably be overkill. You're much better off letting demon spikes recharge while meta is active so that you can get it up immediately once meta has fallen off. Now on to gearing. Here is the stat priority for Vengeance Demon Hunters. The rule of thumb for gear upgrades is very simple. Item level is more important than stat budget on armor. If an item is a 5 item level upgrade, it's probably worth wearing even if the secondary stats are worse. If you want to be sure, using the SimCraft add-on in RaidBots.com is extremely helpful and I cannot recommend it highly enough. This will only help you nail down what maximizes your DPS, but that's okay. In general, going for the highest total item level is what will maximize your defenses in this expansion. The only exceptions to this are rings, trinkets, and sockets. Trinkets are obviously very different pieces of gear that need to be evaluated on a case-by-case -case basis. Because rings don't have agility or armor, you should try to wear rings that give you as much haste on them as possible. And finally, on the subject of sockets, they're worth somewhere between 5 to 10 item levels worth of stat budget, depending on what piece of gear you're looking at. A socket on bracers or a ring is going to matter a lot more than a socket on a weapon or pants or a trinket. Again, sim yourself to be sure. Your secondary stat values will fluctuate with your gear, and simming yourself is the only way to know exactly how to prioritize them. Yes, that will only tell you what does the most damage, but that's why you're playing a demon hunter. You're not some cowardly druid. Do max damage. It's fun. Enjoy it! Alright, while we're on the subject of gear, let's move on to Azerite traits. Demon hunters are in kind of a weird spot when it comes to Azerite traits. They have two traits that provide really small offensive gains, and a handful of traits that offer really significant defensive gains. As a result, you really want to go for a good mix of defensive traits. Yes, I know what I just said about doing max damage. Azerite traits are basically the one spot where DH makes up for being a max damage class everywhere else. Arguably, the most important single point in Azerite for Demon Hunters is Hour of Reaping. It provides a steady increase to your self-healing along with a large chunk of self-shielding in the form of a free soul barrier by casting a 40-stack soul cleave. You only need one point, but it's really impactful. Next up is Revel in Pain, which adds a couple of seconds of duration and a very significant absorb shield onto the end of Fiery Brand. It's very easy to reach the amount of damage needed to max the absorb, and even better, this trait stacks up to three ranks. 
it adds a pretty significant defensive value onto an already solid defensive cooldown. And while I don't generally love bonuses that make defensive cooldowns even stronger because you can't kill a boss by reducing its damage, this works in a really smart way. It doesn't have nasty diminishing returns, it keeps you safe when you need it most, and it's just a really nicely designed bonus. You can go up to three ranks if you feel the need, or just shoot for one or two if you're feeling a bit more brave. Next up are two armor traits, Rigid Carapace and Infernal Armor. Both of them are really noticeable increases to your survivability in Mythic Plus and in Raids. Infernal Armor provides a constant high value armor boost rather than slowly ramping up, so I tend to prefer it. But again, both are good and they're pretty close in value. Next up are the two super important one point wonder traits for Mythic Plus that add a small amount of offensive value, Cycle of Binding and Essence Sever. Cycle of Binding massively reduces your sigil cooldowns and provides a decent chunk of agility. It's extremely valuable for tanking Mythic Plus, probably the single most important point for a Vengeance Demon Hunter in Mythic Plus. Essence Sever has a really positive effect on your rotation in AoE, and with some good procs, it can seriously increase your damage on trash packs, but it's not quite as indispensable as Cycle of Binding. In the second ring, there are a few decent defensive traits and some good stat traits, but Heed My Call and Gut Ripper are the best traits for dealing damage. The haste from overwhelming power and life speed are not bad either. And finally, in the inner ring, there are really only two traits that are particularly good. Gem Hide is still a decent boost to your damage reduction through armor, which is great. And Impassive Visage is still a really versatile, reliable trickle of self healing. Neither of them is mandatory, but they're both pretty nice if you can get them. Now let's move on to trinkets. I recently made a video detailing the value of all 8 trinkets available in Eternal Palace to tanks, and you should check it out. But here's a brief summary. Diamond Lace Refracting Prism from BOD? Still good. Bloodthirsty Urchin? Pretty good. Ashvane's Razor Coral? Very good. Dribbling Ink Pod? Good single target damage even though it's weird. Everything else? Meh. There are plenty of good trinkets available in Mythic Plus as well. The best trinkets from Mythic Plus are Harlan's Loaded Dice from Freehold and Deadeye Spyglass from Siege of Boralus. Any stat proc trinkets will work nicely, and most damage proc trinkets are pretty competitive. The Alchemy Trinket is also pretty nice. Now finally, let's get to Essences. The new Heart of Azeroth system that was added in Patch 8.2. So let's just jump directly into breaking down the Essences. Let's start with the very first trait you get from this system, Crucible of Flame. It deals increasing damage or healing to a single target. It's super simple, but it's also by far the best option for dealing single target damage available to most tanks. It's just a damage skill, the end. It's also super easy to rank up, you just level your neck up to 54 for rank 2, 60 for rank 3, and 70 for rank 4. You complete the short quest chains that pop up at each spot and you'll get your new ranks. Alright, now onto another basic essence, World Vein Resonance. This essence basically just gives you some extra agility and all you have to do is stay within 8 yards of a thing on the ground. The risk reward ratio is not good as a major power, but the minor power essentially just gives you almost all of the value. I hope the major power gets reworked because it sucks, but the minor power is very useful in raids, especially if the rest of your group is also running it. In Mythic Plus, because you're moving around quite a lot more often, it's not very good. Ripple in Space is a weird delayed teleport that deals damage. World PvP talent, this thing sucks. Skip. Memory of Lucid Dreams grants you extra pain generation, and the miner is a 15% chance to return 50% of any pain you spend. Pain is sort of a worthless resource for demon hunters, so wouldn't that make this kind of worthless too? Kinda, but not totally. For one, the versatility proc is good, as is the healing. Also, refunding pain means that you could spend more of your filler globals on Soul Cleave, which does deal pretty low damage and healing, but it's a whole lot more than Throw Glaive or Sigil of Flame. So it's not that bad. Is it good enough to justify using? Probably not, but is it totally worthless? No? Hooray? Next up is Vision of Perfection, which is interesting, and somewhat useful for DH. The major power grants you a short proc of metamorphosis, 
and the miner power reduces its cooldown by 13%. Unlike the rest of the tank guides I've made so far this patch, I have the benefit of a few weeks of logs and player experience with all the essences for this guide, and as a result I can definitively say that this essence is… fine. It's not a great option in raids, but it's decent in Mythic Plus. It's definitely not as popular, or probably not even as strong as Anima of Life and Death, but it's usable. Conflict and Strife is the last of the role agnostic Azerite essences, and it comes from raided PvP. Now again, having farmed this on my Monk and Warrior, I can say that it's really not that bad. I'm not a PvP guy, I just haven't been since Wrath of the Lich King, so over a decade. As a result, I didn't realize that unlocking rank 2, which requires you to reach a rating of over a thousand, basically just requires 11 arena wins. You don't lose rating for losing games when you're below 1400, so there's really nothing to it. You could be a total chump, like me, and still easily grind out a thousand rating in an afternoon. So now for the real review of Conflict and Strife, the minor power is pretty good. It grants a bunch of versatility and there's nothing bad about that. The major power grants Cleanse by Flame, which is a pretty mediocre PvP talent. At rank 3, it also causes applying a loss of control effect to an enemy to grant a stack of strife. And oh baby does it work well with sigils. From playing around with it on the PTR, each enemy you hit with a sigil of misery or a Sigil of Silence grants you a stack of Strife, meaning that in a decent sized Mythic Plus trash pack, you can immediately burst out to the maximum of eight stacks. Even better, you gain double versatility for five seconds afterward, making this trait worth a cool 800 verse. That's not too shabby. Will it be good in raids? Probably not. Will it compete with Anima of Life and Death? It might, or it may not. We'll have to see. Now on to the tank-specific essences. Azeroth's Sundying Gift is a very simple defensive cooldown. It comes from the new Eternal Palace raid. This power is very nice and it fits into Demon Hunter's toolkit amazingly well. If you find yourself needing another defensive cooldown for raid or tyrannical Mythic Plus weeks, this is the best one offered by Essence Powers by far, and its minor power is a very nice reactive boost of armor in Mythic Plus as well. Anima of Life and Death is a very interesting option for Demon Hunters, and it's by far the most powerful option for dealing burst AoE damage. It's a pretty long cooldown for an AoE damage skill, and if it definitely won't increase your DPS over the course of a dungeon as smoothly as Conflict and Strife, but it's capable of dealing a larger chunk of burst damage. Depending on how large you pull packs, it could wind up being the better option, although those would have to be some pretty large pulls. The healing and max health it provides are also very, very nice. I like this power very much, and I think it's going to wind up being the default choice in Mythic Plus, although Conflict and Strife Rank 3 might wind up edging it out. Aegis of the Deep is not a good major power. Flat damage reduction is bad, bad, bad. You really need to be taking a lot of small hits for it to have much impact, and even then it only stands to be a 10 to 20% damage reduction cooldown, and it's on the global cooldown. Ugh. The minor power provides a pretty sizable chunk of versatility when tanking large groups of adds, so it's pretty, pretty good in Mythic Plus. Nullification Dynamo has a decent minor power. It's not crazy, but it is very good if you need magic damage mitigation. And in raid fights with constant magic damage and ideal conditions, it is the highest DPS minor power available at rank 3. The major power, however, is undertuned, the cooldown is very long, and it's on the global cooldown. It's awful. And finally, Sphere of Suppression! The minor power grants a reactive slow and a small boost to haste and movement speed. That's another really good option for Mythic Plus. The major power's 25% attack speed slow can be a really powerful defensive cooldown in Mythic Plus, and it provides a powerful kiting cooldown for Demon Hunters, filling one of the biggest holes in the class's toolkit. I think this is a great defensive essence for demon hunters looking to push high level mythic plus keys, especially on difficult weeks such as uh, teeming necrotic fortified. I hate those weeks, and this should make them less awful. So just to recap, Crucible of Flames is the best single target damage major power. Anima of Life and Death is a very solid offensive major power for mythic plus, although Rank 3 Conflict and Strife looks pretty nice as well. 
Azeroth's Undying Gift is the best defensive major power for raids and tyrannical mythic plus weeks, and Sphere of Suppression looks like another really good defensive major power for difficult fortified mythic plus weeks. Well, I think that about covers it. If you have any questions about Vengeance Demon Hunter, ask away. Stay tuned for more Patch 8.2 content, and as always, please like and subscribe. Thanks for watching. Bye.